Hello. How are you guys? Is my microphone facing the right way? It is, it is. Okay, cool. I'm a little late. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Getting my computer set up. All right. Hey, Louise. How's it going? There we go. All right, so apparently I could not get my duvets ready to sew. You know, they they became really fiddly, of course, right? Because I needed to make sure they were squared and the right measurement. It's got to be really specific because my duvet needs to fit inside. And um, I, I know that I can't fit it all on the table under the camera all the time. And so I was like, gosh, by the time I get to this, this to a point, that I can sew it on camera, there's gonna be one step left. So I was just like, this is, and I was here till like 6.30 last night getting it ready. I didn't think it would take that long. And I was like, you know what? It's time to just go to the backup project. So, hey Barbara, how's it going? So here we are. Um, so yesterday I uploaded a video on how to sew the bodice panel of the Charlie Caftan. And um, I had never finished the dress. So I'm gonna sew the dress today. So the link is in the description below if you want the bodice panel. Um, you kind of do that first, second, I think, in the instructions. First you do the center front seam, and then you do the bodice panel. So you just need to do your front, center front seam, and then the bodice panel, and then you're set, and, and then you can come back here and finish with me. <laughs> so um, how are you guys? How are you guys doing? Are you guys um, sewing up a storm? I've just been like, recording and editing and recording and editing lately. I'm actually enjoying it, but um, it's a lot of back and forth, so. All right, I'm gonna check my, my microphone here. I'm gonna angle it a little better. There we go. All right. So everything looks okay. Cool, all right, so um, here's so far. So one thing I did do differently on this is I'm gonna, I put a bodice panel on both the front and the back um, just because the, I wanted didn't want to have to have a waist tie and I want some cinching back there. So I just thought I'd give it a shot, right? So we can see how it is. And I think, so here's, and this one also has the major fabric flaw. Look at this fabric flaw. Oh, it's kind of dark, huh? I thought it was going to be too bright. Let me um, lighten it up for you guys. I think that was before I had my um, light on. Table's a little bright. There we go. You can see that. You did your homework, Ray? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? You can see my fingers. It's just a full on flaw in the fabric. Oh. I'm just gonna um, make a dart that starts like right here and goes straight down to the hem. You know, I mean, that's just pretty much all I can do. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like obsess over it. You know what I mean? It, of course it's on the front too. Hey, Mullen. <gasps> you broke your finger. Oh my gosh. Hey, Sydney. Oh yeah. It's funny how your digits are, are so essential to everything. Yeah. Thanks for commenting, Louise. That was nice of you. This, is, this was a fun one to just sew. I, I mean, it's so specific, right? But I know a lot of people have made this. Oh, I forgot to change my thread color. I mean, no big deal, right? But still, I like being ready for you guys. For those, you know, couple of cranky people who are like, why do you talk so much? I just want the free video. <laughs> How, can you, are you going to tell us how you broke it or is that, Oh, do I not have a, this is it? Oh, I have a fold one. Okay, good. It's going to say, I don't like winding a bobbin if, um, I don't already have one, you know, like, like just, just winding it, winding it is kind of, I don't know why it always puts me on edge doing it on this machine. This is a great one, Barbara. I really feel like um, I'm not a big fan of patterns that don't have a, a set in sleeve, but this one I, I actually doesn't doesn't bug me. 
I am just going to get this ready for a um, to wind my bum. Hey, Derek, how's it going? This is a very short bob, and you know it's going to run out when I'm top stitching my neckline. I'm calling it right now. <laughs> my other spool thread on here. I always have two bobbins of every color going unless it's a really specific color and um, or a very small amount of sewing. But I have two of every bobbin. So I always have one winding and one um, in my bobbin case. That's just kind of how an industrials work best. Just means you have to have a lot of bobbins. When Rayanne, um, stopped working here in the shop and bought her machine. Um, I sold her like some bobbins with it, but um, I definitely, when she s didn't work here anymore at all, I took all the bobbins out of the binding machine and put them in this machine too. Oh no. You knock something in the head and jam through anything. Oh, that's such a bummer. I'm sorry. All right, so like I said, um, yesterday I released a video on how to sew this bodice panel. I'll show you from the back. This one's been um, hand sewn shut. Um, it's really, it's really manageable. So don't let this intimidate you. I know putting this, you know, cutting this big hole in the middle, just be, just, you know, cut accurately and do the little tips I tell you to do, like, you know, and, and it'll be really straightforward. Um, and if you like, I think that there's good points and bad points about using like something like a rayon. The rayon is super loosey goosey and a little hard to manage sometimes, but at the same time you can, um, because it's so drapey, you, you might not mind it even if it gets a little wonky. Um, cotton is going to be far easier, like far more stable, but if you get something like a linen or the yarn dyes or the, um, uh, chambray's things that kind of have a thready weave that all that threadiness and the the open weave may give you a little bit of a challenge because that open weave gets more relaxed and it makes the hole a little bigger but you are gathering it up so it's there's just goods and bad so I would just pick the fabric you really really want to put the effort in on you know that's how I feel about like when you're picking your first knitting project you should pick something you really really want most people don't really, really, really want a, you know, four foot long scarf, you know. Maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe you do. Here's my other one. So here's my back. I'm going to do two. This one needs to be pressed, I can tell. It's kind of poofy. But they both turned out really good. I have a chalk line right there. I sewed one and then I was like, I'm gonna do a better video. And so I did the, I did it again. So that's why I have to. All right, so let's do the shoulders. I'm gonna do French seams today as well. And I'm gonna do French seams with my inseam pocket. I've been using a chair lately and not my rack. I don't know why, my little cart. <laughs> it's nice and flat there. So let's do, yeah, our shoulders and then um, I'll do my neck, my neckline next. I, I actually don't have the pattern in front of me, so I'm sorry if I'm going to do this a little out of order. You can do it in this order, though. As long as you've done uh, your center front seam and then your bodice panel, I would do those before you have your whole dress. Don't put it off. You know what I mean? Like, don't sit there and go, oh, I'm going to wait until I'm feeling a little better about doing this, I would definitely do that first off when you have less demand, less fabric to manage. This looks like I barely got it on here or something. Why is that such a funky angle? Sheesh. Is that the hem shape? What the heck? What the heck? Have a little trouble getting it in there. I made, uh, no, what I did, um, wait, what, what the, what the heck did I just do? Oh, I, I just sewed that to the wrong shoulder. 
Ooh, this is gonna be a good stream. <laughs> oh man. I decided, Ray, that I wanted the back to have a little bit of cinching without using the ties. The ties are great, um, and I think they're nice because it's variable, but I don't really, admittedly, don't really like the look of the tie. It looks very apron-y for me, and um, it rips out of the seam. So I didn't put it on on my other two. Yeah. And so I want a little cinching in the back, and so what I did was I cut the exact same bodice panel on the back, Ray. And so I have two. And um, and then the, the the lucky thing about that was it gave me two opportunities to sew it for the video, and I took those opportunities. I was like, okay, this video came out okay, but I'm gonna do it one more time because it's like, this is the thing with recording a video. It seems like it doesn't take that much time, but invariably you'll think as you're going how you could have said that better or with less words or a little clearer. And it's like, all right, well, I'm not going to take out what I just sewed and sew it again because um, it's obvious when I've done that um, and it may not be successful. So I have to, you know, cut and sew another one. Um, so, I, you know, they're kind of a fabric hog. But I, I like doing it, I have to admit. My next one's going to be... Um, sewing elastic onto a waistband using your serger. Remember when we did that? I'm gonna do that. Oof. My stitch length is a little bit, it's not too short, but it's shorter than it usually is. <laughs> and I feel it. <laughs> yeah, so Ray, it's an experiment. I'm kind of hoping, I, I was kind of in a hurry when I cut out the dress, so I definitely was like, all right, I hope I placed this bodice panel in the right spot and not too low, you know? I also don't want it to look maternity. My body type is, it's really easy for things to look maternity on me. Thankfully, I'm at an age now where someone wouldn't ask when my baby was due. If they did, I would definitely be blushing for sure. But, you know. Yeah, and the way I did it was I, I just kind of lined up the pattern. I didn't and I didn't do any voodoo with it. I just lined it up and um, kind of cut the exact same shape. I can't remember. Is the back on the fold? I think the back might be even on the fold. Oh, that's what it is. So you have to, I had to extend the bottom of the back so that there was gathers. So the back is actually a little bigger along the bottom you know what I mean so so I think the back might be on a straight up fold straight down um, and um, I can't remember I just can't remember what that pattern piece looks like that's so funny but yeah all right so here is this one let's line it up a little better this time yeah wrong sides together okay now we're starting the video <laughs> oh, look at that. That fits so much better. I was wondering why that angle looked so funky. The shoulder's still a little long. But... There we go. Oh, you know what I think I did? I did it to the... Did I do it to this edge? Did I do a shoulder to one of those? Maybe I did. Oh, that's what I did. I did a shoulder to the arm opening. That's what I did. You're fatally attracted to him. I feel that so much. There's so many times, especially when I shopped at Target a lot and they rearranged their clothing departments to put the maternity where the women's was. And I was like, oh my gosh, these are so cute. <laughs> oh man. You really, Ray, Ray? That's so funny. I'm consistent. I do feel like there's a danger with the silhouette, you know? 
Oh, I, you know what, Louise? I haven't, I haven't heard that yet, but someone told me that in one of the So Over 50 posts. That's so cool. So what was it for? Someone said it was on the free sewing one. And I was like, free sewing? What am I giving away for free? So maybe it was just some of my free patterns or something. I was honestly really shocked by that, but I, that's very nice to hear. I'm pretty behind on those podcasts and all podcasts. This is one thing I think that one of the downsides to me as a content creator is, and I know this is going to sound like you just want to delete me and never look at me again. Um, sewing is not my hobby. It's my life, right? So, and I don't mean that in a tr dramatic way. I just mean like it's my been my career. Um, everything I do during the day is sewing related. My hobby is not sewing. I mean, it can be. You know, I do do it on my days off. But um, on my days off, I do other things like game and um, well, I actually don't do a lot of that during on my days. I do it in the evening. But I do things like badly garden succulents or do a little garden work or um, read, listen to books. You know, those are my hobbies. <laughs> so I don't listen to sewing podcasts or watch sewing videos very much in my free time. It's just not something I do, you know. Um, I, I do when I'm looking for information or whatever or to see like, oh, that's been done. I'm not going to do that. I just steer clear of things like that. So, um, yeah, I'd love to, Beverly. I hear mixed results on um, a couple of the patterns. So I was like, I don't know which one to do. But I would be totally down to sell, sewing one of her patterns. Good resource. That's cool. That's really cool. Okay, I'm going to iron this. Like the things I watch, I literally watch gaming streams because that's my hobby. I like playing a couple certain games and then I want to be better at it because I'm really terrible at them. And so that's what I'm trying to learn is how to be better at doing certain things like that. That's my Alzheimer's prevention is gaming. <laughs> I keep thinking there's a hair right here, but it's just the print. I need my iron. My iron was hot. I'm gonna fix this little iron bobble right here too. This is kind of bugging me. Like, look at this. Look at this way I iron this. It's like, oh, how did I do that? I'm gonna have to iron it this way first to get it back on track. Now I can iron it this way. There we go. I also don't think like me being in someone's stream is honestly the best thing for the streamer either because it looks like I'm self-promoting and I don't want to do that. I do not want to people to think that I'm trying to get their viewers, you know. Um, and then also I really love trying to keep someone's chat interactive and the chat going and talking. Because I know as a streamer, I really love it when people are talking and um, participating like that. Because that's exactly what this is all about. But if I do that a lot, then it also looks like I'm attention seeking or I'm, I'm a know-it-all or something like that. So I honestly, if I'm in someone's stream, I'm lurking. And at least on YouTube, you can't see who is in the stream. Whereas on Twitch, you can. You can see who's in the stream. You can't, you can't hide. You can not chat, and if nobody checks, but I just like, I don't know. I am not a self-promoter that way. It's just, uh, and it's good, it's good etiquette. A lot of people don't follow it, but it is good etiquette. All right. I really wish I was sewing this bodice panel again because I love sewing it. It's so fun. I'm 
Um, I'm I'm open to that, Ray. I just feel like it could be potentially a um, a challenge, you know? Because what if um, the the person who sends it needs a lot of a uh, fitting changes, and I would I feel a little uncomfortable doing that, you know. Oh, is the Arden pants from Helen's closet, Melin? Okay, that's cool. It would be fun to do a, a pants. Are those pull-on pants by any chance? Are they, um, I want to look them up. If you're here for the Charlie Caftin so long, I do have other videos. I just don't know how good they are. They're old. Ray can tell you she's been catching up on old videos. <laughs> I feel like I had technical difficulties in one. That's what makes me a little nervous about it. So I wouldn't mind having a, um, another so long of the Charlie, but I, f I feel bad that I don't have the boss panel in it. Or if you sent the wrong fabric. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because I've thought about doing that. Like, I did it for my friend Maria, but she's a garment sewist. And I just said, hey, do you have a 100 acts of sewing pattern I can sew for you? Because I don't need no another garment right now, you know? Yeah, I don't know, Beverly. I mean... There is a risk, <laughs> you know? All right, I'm going to do the neckline next. Because I sometimes am, not sometimes, I'm very enthusiastic, if you haven't noticed. Um, and um, my enthusiasm can probably translate to being kind of annoying or uh, attention-seeking. You know what I mean? So it's why sometimes, like, I'll comment on someone's posts is this team lots five eights on this? Um, I think so. And then I'll think, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't have said that. I was trying to be helpful, but it sounded like I was a know-it-all. I'm always worried about that. You know, like today I saw some guy post that he got magnets for his scissors, you know, to do that trick where you put the magnet here and then you don't have to add seam allowance because he was like, you know, I really hate it when shirt patterns only have three eighths of an inch seam allowance. So instead of just drawing them on, I got some quarter inch and three eighths inch magnets, you know, and you put the magnet, you know, like, like this on your, on your scissors. And then you line up your magnet to the cut line and then you add the amount, that adds the amount of seam allowance as you cut. And I was like, oh, that, I love that trick. I think it's really cool. I've seen it and I've never done it before. But I was like, just be careful because um, you're going to magnetize the tips of your scissors. If you sew with pins, you might end up having a pin stuck to your scissors and and um that happened to me once that's why i don't use magnets for my pins so then the pin will get stuck to your scissors and you don't see it it'll be on the back side like this like a smaller pin especially or you're cutting along and you don't see it doesn't that make you sweat right now there's a pin on my scissors right now and and you'll cut through the scissor the pin eventually it's so it happens so easily it's why i don't use magnets and, um, and then I thought, oh, that was kind of know-it-all-ish. <laughs> I was just trying to be helpful, but then I was like, yeah, I shouldn't have said all that. You know? You can't win. You just can't win. <laughs> I just try and be true to myself. <laughs> all right, so yeah, the Arden pants. Oh, okay, Ray. You're not fighting a review. <laughs> okay, they are pull on. They can have elastic up at the leg. <laughs> I said that to my friend once, something along the lines. I was like, I I said something. I can't remember what it was. I was like, yeah, like, then you remember you hate people. <laughs> you know, I was like, I love people. I want to help them. And then I'm like, oh. Man, sometimes I hate people, you know? <laughs> I am people. <laughs> I am that people too. Alright, so just I don't need to do French seams on the shoulders. I'm not really liking the way my machine's sewing right now. Um, I think I might have too big of a needle is my problem. So I'm just gonna change my needle. I swear that I had a 14 in here. But I'm not sure. So I'm gonna change my needle right now. 
Yeah, this feels like a 14. It's like a piece of gum, huh? Right. These are always so fussy to get out. Well, that was the wrong side. These look so big. Why do these feel so big? I usually sew with 16s and 18s, and these for once feel big to me. This is my old one, right? I don't know why I'm holding it. Hey, Rebecca! Your sewing machine is coming out really beautiful. I don't know if any of you follow Rebecca on Instagram, but she has re... Um, uh, refurbished, I could not think of the word just now, for an entire treadle machine, not, entire, not a treadle machine, a, ma a sewing machine cabinet, but she does sew with her treadle as well. The leg elastic is like a lining, a, sh a channel with elastic in it. Oh. Nancy? Is it? Well, I don't have anything smaller, to be honest. It does feel a little big. I'm hoping a new needle feels just better in general. Sorry if I keep slamming my machine <laughs> down. Uh, the rotary cutters, I put in an old rotary um, container, and then I put them in a padded envelope, and um, I give them to a sharps place. Needles, I just throw in the garbage. But I don't have kids going through my garbage like I used to. I know that sounds weird, but you know what I mean if you have kids and stuff. There you go. That's a good idea, Sydney. Yeah, or just tossing it in the rotary case is fine too. But I used to, and now I would probably do that because um, I don't go through as many blades. But when we were going through as many blades as we were, I would put them in a padded envelope. And I also had a diabetic dog at the time. And so we had a sharps container and I, and I could throw them in there. Yeah. Oh, did she? Oh, very cool. Yeah. Rebecca, you, seeing Rebecca's process is pretty cool. Did you hashtag all those a separate hashtag Rebecca? So that they're all in one spot. It'd be kind of cool to see like, you know, even if it was just Rebecca's Vintage or something like that, and then you can click it and then just see all of the the refurbishing of that machine in one spot would be kind of cool. All right, so I think I'm going to um, sew my uh, facings together first and then put it onto my neckline. Because this has the... Um, Wait, what does this look like? Does this go like, wait a minute. Did I cut too many of these? I don't remember what this looks like. Does this go like, on, is this nest on the, the pattern or is it, um, or is it, it's a separate, it's like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's in this, it's a seam, right? Like I sew it together here. <laughs> It's not um, lined up with the uh, neckline like this, right? I cannot remember. My neckline is also two inches higher because I, I find this to be a little bit low. Oh no, that actually, wait, wait a minute. Oh yeah, okay, okay, so wait. I don't remember how this sews together. How does this go? Right? Like, why? This almost lines up. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> look at, there's my, but look at how far away that is. So maybe this is, does this, this doesn't go like that. I've made three of these. So why isn't this lining up? Oh man. That's not gonna line up at all. So does it go like this? 
Okay, if I, if I overlap this an inch and a quarter, does it line up then? That's what it is. That's what it is, really? Yeah, I do, I'll go get them. I've only made three of this darn dress. Rebecca, you just made it, tell me how it goes. Uh, yeah, it, it's lined up. So did I just cut too many of those? Is that what happened? Oh, shoot. No, I don't know. I just made that hashtag up. But um, Rebecca's uh, Instagram is Rebecca Shelley Arts. Right, Rebecca? Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Huh. What's this seam allowance? It says five eighths. All right, what did I do? <laughs> I think that, because this, this is what's throwing me off. Like, it's squared. I, I know that it doesn't sew to the seam because of that. But I, my seam allowance is not going to work. It's a Saturday stream. I See, I knew the stream was going to be like this when I sewed that first seam. All right, let's see here. All right. This is my center back or center front. But look at that. It's so far off. Like so far off. Hmm. I think I need new interfacings. I raised mine up right here, but I wonder if, um, I, I even looked at the pattern pieces and made sure that I had the correct uh, facing, but this is not the correct facing. Look at that. This is not the correct facing. Oh boy, I'll be back in a minute. I need to go find some fabric. Derek totally Are you kidding nah the brightness is up because of the navy blue here I'll try not to blind you is that better nah I don't think the neckline stretched because just that the ram won't stretch like that you know it can get a little loosey-goosey but I think what this is, is um, the original neckline with the revised pattern pieces for the raised one. Oh yeah, yeah, on the Sew Over 50, there was a guest post about a gal who only refurbishes sewing machines. Yeah, I'm not sure, I think that's what it is, Barbara. I think that's exactly what it is. I did raise it, but um, I must have cut the old neckline. And look, I'll even show you. Like the pattern pieces on my thing, raised raised neckline. Um, and then um, on my pattern, actual pattern piece, it is taped on here. 
see? Taped on there. So it is my raised one. But I'm, I know that, um, I think the seam allowance is different and that might be where I'm getting into trouble. This is, see look at that, that works. This is the seam, that's the fold. What did I do? Yeah, look at that. I wonder if I... Well, it might be here. Like, it's funny, because I remember I had the, the barely enough for a seam allowance here. Maybe I needed to do a bigger seam allowance. See, that should be there. Look at that. Hmm. I actually don't know. Oh well, I can I can um I can fix it. Let's see if this works here. This is the original facing. It's kind of funky right here. This is on the fold. Yeah, like it's not gonna be a um raised neckline, unfortunately. I just wear this little camisole under there. It's too, too, uh, it's too low cut for me. I'm not modest, but I am very sensitive about my chest. <laughs> I'm very sensitive about it. And it's funny because I ask my husband occasionally, like, oh my gosh, this is too low cut. And he's like, what are you talking about? It's perfect. And it's because when I'm wearing it, I can see straight down. You know, and I, I don't know why I would trust whatever he says anyway. <laughs> Not about that. I'm looking for my back neck facing, which I can't seem to find now. Where is it? This is just my size guide. I don't even want that. This is the kind of content you come here for, right? Let's see. There it is. Oh. You stay there. You stay there. You, I'm gonna just throw all that over there in a pile. Okay. Let's see how this is here. Because maybe my, um, that. I wonder if it's something I did with my, uh, when I added the, um, see this feels like it goes like this. Look at that. All right. Well, I'm going to cut this one and make one for that. I added the back bodice panel, but I didn't add anything there. So I don't want to lose that again. All right. I'm going to my iron. It's going to be a little awkward. Yeah, exactly, Nancy. I am not graceful at all, and I um, tend to forget sometimes, you know, how revealing something can be. It took one time driving by my neighbor once, who was bent over weeding, to understand that I could never do that wearing a skirt. <laughs> so, I will leave the rest up to your imagination. <laughs> I was like, oh, uh, that's what it looks like when I bend over and garden in my skirt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she wasn't very nice to me, but still, I really felt for her in that moment. So. Okay. Winging it. I'm just going to do it like. It'll fit somebody. <laughs> That's what we always used to say. I'm trying to get this nice and relaxed. Nice 
nice and relaxed. Like this. Don't mind it being off a little bit. This is so awkward. I'm gonna get some chalk. Chalk, chalk. Here we go. This will work. So I need, this is my seam line right here, and then um, I need a little bit more for the seam allowance there. Yeah, okay. Front. Now I'm looking for a ruler. <laughs> Everything's over at my big table because I was working on that duvet cover last night. Sorry, I was trying to read chat. Yeah, Nancy, what, wh how, why did that end up being a tiny dress? Hello, Helen. Thanks for subscribing. All right, where's my, okay. I won't say this isn't typical, Helen, but it's not. <laughs> Look at that. Fine. Fine. Just need a little bit more seam allowance there. There we go. There's my front. Just gotta love how wasteful uh, some of these neckline facings are. Eh? Yeah, right, Ray. I know. That's funny because uh, I, I, uh, my husband was like, "Is this a dress yours?" And it was this dress that I bought a long time ago from like I think Garnet Hill, you know. And um, I was going to just donate it just because I actually barely wear anything I haven't made now, and. I never wear that dress in particular just because it's just, I don't know, it's fine. It's just kind of not like me. Okay, stop that. And um, then I was like, okay, maybe I'll just try it out. And then I was like, oh, maybe I could rework it into something. So I'm kind of there with you. I'm going to check it out and see if I can rework it into something else or give it to my mom. My mom is much tinier than me, but she likes things to be really loose. So she often will take my hand -down, hand me downs and then they look better on her. <laughs> making me realize maybe that's the, the I should be making my clothes bigger. <laughs> you know. My shoulders may be a little bit wonky, but I'm going to beat them into submission when I sew it. I just wish this was anything but round, to be honest. You know? This rayon is loosey goosey. I 
I'm going to, this is going to bug me. This is the kind of thing I will be laying in bed tonight thinking about how did this go wrong? You know what I mean? And I think it must have been just me cutting it out too quickly and deciding to add that extra bot back bodice panel. It's the only variable I can think of. I've made this three times and haven't had this issue. So, uh, almost, Ray, I've almost, I kind of sat there and trued up my duvet and then just realized there was going to be like one step left to do on camera and also how uh, fussy it was to get it square. All right, so do I cut two in fabric or do I cut one in interfacing? I'm trying to decide what I want. I may just, I swear these pattern pieces say cut two. Right? Do they say cut two? Yeah, cut two, one fabric and one interfacing. Ah! All right, well. Let me get some interfacing. I was about to iron those, but I'm going to go get some interfacing. Oh, wait, it's right here, I think. Yes, it's right here. Let's see if I can just cut off a piece here. My interfacing is living near my uh, thread, I mean, my fabric uh, scrap <laughs> trash. It's getting a little thready. A cornered laser light. Oh my God, that sounds so satisfying and so precise. I That's so interesting um, that you asked that, Beverly, about having a concern about the finished weight. I do, mainly because I really want mine to stay nice and cool. And I do think that because I'm backing the the jelly roll part of it that I made because of the thread threadiness, um, I'm adding like a layer of quilting cotton behind it. Whoa, that doesn't look very even, does it? And um, I am a little concerned about the weight of it. Are you worried about the weight of yours? Your are you wait? With Beverly, Beverly. Yeah. Yeah, so I am, but um, I'm also now concerned with the backing I picked. It felt pretty good in the store, and now I'm a little worried it'll snag pet nails. You know what I mean, jelly beans? So. I love this fabric, too. Well, Nancy, if you want you know, sweet justice and get your fabric. You, you can buy it from Needle Sharp. I'm pretty sure it's on her website. I got this on one of her sales, unless that was it when she sold this. I like kind of how this looks embroidered, you know. <laughs> Louise, me too. I wake up thinking of sewing. Often, all every day. <laughs> Lately, I think about um, video editing because the more I do it, the more I start realizing, like, okay, now I think I may understand this one term. Like, it'll just pop into my head because I don't understand all the tools. The software's so powerful, and I'll be like, huh. And then all of a sudden I'll be like, oh my gosh, I'll bet this tool does this. And it does, you know, it's kind of neat. Um, so I think about that and I think about how, like, I don't need to make my videos look like every other video out there in the world, right? So what could I do that may be a better way to have a how-to video, you know? And I think the, um, you know, I'm going to do Vimeo's. I'm going to do this from the fabric side. Um... I'm going to try Vimeo's chapters feature. So. Yeah, exactly. It's so appealing and so unusual. I know. I did buy it a, a while ago.
Do you love how accurate I cut that? <laughs> I um, was at a local fabric store the other day um, looking for, what was it? Whatever, Benden Fabric probably. And um, there's a new employee there that I hadn't met. And we were talking and um, she said, you know, I really want a label that says not an heirloom. And I was like, I would buy the heck out of that. Like, that is exactly how I feel about sewing. And probably watching me do this is it's such a good example. Like, I think we look at nice rayon dress and we think, oh, that just looks so nice. Like, I love a good rayon dress. You know, they look kind of fancy. They're com what we know inside, how comfortable and drapey they are. And, um... But I do not sew to, for heirloom stuff. I just don't hold things pressure like that, press, precious like that. I'm just throwing that in the trash so I don't accidentally use it. And um, I have thought about like, when I was sewing, getting my duvet all trued up. I was like, oh, um, this is like, I hope no one sees the inside of this, you know. And then I was like, who cares, like. Just because I have a hundred year old quilt hanging on my wall, mine's not gonna be hanging on someone's wall, you know? So. Yeah, right, Louise? I totally know that one. Or sometimes, like, something will reinvigorate you about the project. Like, oh, wait, this isn't as big of an issue as I thought before. Like, things that I had trouble with. Like, just like teaching. Like, for me, you guys know I've been like, oh, I don't think I could be a teacher. You know, I don't think I'd be a teacher. And now I think, like, why was I worried about this aspect of teaching or that aspect of teaching? Now I kind of crave doing it and helping people, you know. All right, my really badly cut facing. Let's see how I did. I'm going to trim a little of those interfacing. I'm not going to trim my fabric down yet unless, until I know it's the right size. Yeah, exactly. The big mistake. Didn't I do one of those recently? What was that? And I was like, well, I won't do this again. I can't remember what it was, but I was like, well, at least I won't do this again. <laughs> Wasn't it on camera too? Usually. All right, so I'm going to lay this on here again and look at it. Fingers crossed. Or as Ray says, fingies crossed. I love that. Fingies crossed. Alright. I'm gonna get out some Oh my gosh. I have a thread spool really close to my pin thingy. Well, this isn't even my pin thingy. I've been too lazy to put them back in my um pin cushion. Don't judge me. I just like when I'm doing a video, I just need to be as fast as possible. I always think about that person that's just like, oh my God, can't you edit this down? <laughs> I'm like, you try it. <laughs> I'm getting better at that. I'm getting better at places I can just kind of cut out a chunk. All right, so this is looking a lot better. This um, shoulder right here can be a little bit shorter. Yeah, so that shoulder, okay, and kind of about the back here. So I pinch it like that. What do I get? I haven't, I haven't fixed the hole yet. It's still there, right? <laughs> I'll fix it at the end, I think. This is... This is, is, is not so perfect. Let's see here. Oh, Nancy, thanks. I'm glad. I, uh, I don't know if I'm working on my tone, but I'm definitely trying to be clear and concise, you know. I have this whole beginning sewing video with a project recorded, and I think I'm just going to edit that and put it up on YouTube. 
I know. I mean, I think, Rebecca, you saw that. You saw kind of the genesis of that, right? Because you were one of the people encouraging me to teach. And I was like, oh, I can't teach. I'm not a teacher. I don't know how to do that. And um, granted, I feel more confident now after seeing, you know, what people want to know, um, how they want to know it. And also, I think, like, a lot of my trepidation comes from what if I can't teach them that? Not that I don't know the subject matter, matter, but more like what if I can't convey that? Or what if, what if that is uh, it's too hard for me to describe? You know what I mean? And um, I'm getting more about, like, well, whatever. Like, in a way, I'm like, who cares if it is? I'll learn. <laughs> so, yeah. The one I surged and just narrowed was super impressed. Oh. Whoa. Oh, was that the Myosotis? Yeah. <laughs> Sydney, I did that exact same thing the other day. <laughs> oh, that's. That's high praise, Nancy. Thank you. I, I don't watch a lot of how-tos, so I don't know. I don't want um, to end up copying someone by accident or doing a video. I actually think there is someone really big right now. Um, doing. They're doing the exact same video as me right after I do it. And they've done it three times in a row. And I'm just kind of like... <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm going to not subscribe to your channel anymore so I don't know that. <laughs> okay. This is, I'm making this look so much harder than it really is. If I were just sitting here at a table, it would be easier. But my sewing machine table is slicker than snot with this rayon. All right, see this, why does this one work now? This one. Okay, so this one here, we're going to... This works now. Whatever. Yeah, Barbara, I think so too. Breaking it down into steps. And sometimes I'll go through it and then I'm like, okay, I can actually break this down further or lump these two things together in one like more seamless thing since they're kind of a part of one another, you know? Um, and I was trying to do that, especially breaking them down so that they are, look at how small, like, look at that. That's almost perfect. This is the user error and I am the user. Yeah, don't worry about it, you guys. I actually get messages even from really big content creators that ask me questions on how to do certain things. They don't follow me and they don't ever attribute that. So I, I don't understand the acting like how people can act like that, but what ebbs? What ebbs? All right, I'm just putting my, my seam allowance back on there and hoping for the best. <laughs> it's already so freaking wonky. All right, so I think I'm going to do my trick of sewing it to the wrong side and flipping it to the right side. Is that how this goes? This isn't how this goes, is it? This is the one that goes to the inside. Yeah, this is the one that goes to the inside. All right. Just tell me what to do here, because right, apparently I don't know today. So this one I actually don't need visible, so that's fine. I can just do it from the right side, like a normal human being. I don't need to do any fancy schmancy, coward cowardly tricks. <laughs> I'm not a coward. Well, it won't matter, Ray. <laughs> But it does make me go, oh, that's how you've gotten there. Because you've been, you've been getting your content from other people. 
You know what I end up doing? I mute them. I don't unfollow them, but I don't I don't look at their stuff anymore. It's like I am not new here. I, my account may be small, but that's because I chose to do the honorable thing and not shoehorn my customer base into a sewing base because they did not expect that, you know? So I started over and it's been freaking painful. <laughs> you know? But I like to tell my friend um, sometimes when we're talking about stuff like this that I want to not, my, I don't want my whole world on Instagram. I, I think like that's not my goal. Instagram is a really amazing tool and I spend a lot of time on there like checking it, you know, like like making sure I don't have a question or a comment or whatever. Um, and I look at it uh, somewhat, of course, you know, and look at people's posts. Sometimes I actually search for like you guys on there, you know, and to see what you guys are up to. But I don't want Instagram to be my defining platform. That's not what I'm here for, you know. I actually looked into that, Nancy, and you can't. I can't block them. Because I was kind of like, okay, this is not cool, you know? But um, I can't block someone. And even if I could, I could only block them if my videos were private. So, Or like I could block them in my chat, like one of you guys. Um, but then they could just get a different email address and watch and lurk. This just happens. I mean, I've been in the fashion industry for over 30 years. The fashion industry. These kinds of hijinks are not new to me. I've worked for designers, you guys. You know how that is? <laughs> Do you know what that's like? I don't recommend it. <laughs> So yeah, all right, <laughs> the final test, how did I actually do here? Yeah, I keep waiting for one creator to, to post the project because I'm kind of curious if they'll do it. I'll tell you, it was the Tamarack jacket too. They wanted to know how I put a collar on it. I was like, how do you not know that? Yeah, I mean, that is, there is um, some truth to that, Ray, for sure. You know, that, that um, I mean, and that's the thing. I, like, the whole, um, not that this, this, I don't, this, what I'm about to say has nothing to do with what I, I feel like people do to me. But, um the copying thing, like the, the big conversation usually in the fashion industry is copying and stuff, you know, and um, that is such a hard thing to track. There are ways, I mean, you can track it, you know, there's, there's, there's some very prominent things you can do for like the really big folks and stuff like that, but it happens all the time. I mean, that's what you count on budget companies copying couture, right? So it kind of trickling down, you know, like that famous uh, line in um, The Devil Wears Prada, remember? And Anne Hathaway's like, I don't wear any of this stuff. And she's like, I, you are wearing that sweater because of everything I selected in this room because it went this way, this way, this way. And she's absolutely right. You know, and I really love that exchange because it really does illustrate it, and it's and it's hundred percent true. You can think you're not a, a um, participating in that, but you are to some degree, right? Um, and people guard their design stuff really jealously. I've told you I've worked in locked a locked design room, which I hated um, because we had spies, and I was like, who cares? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so. So yeah, yeah, you can't copyright clothing. Um, you can copyright a sketch. I don't think they do that though. 
Maybe they like the drama of it too. I don't know. Look at how big this seam allowance is because I was trying to smooth it out. Oof. And right here, this is my V at that seam, which, oh, I don't like doing that. All right. All right. Let's understitch this bad boy. So anyway, I didn't turn my air conditioner on because it's been so nice here. Oh my gosh, Rebecca, isn't the weather just like such a relief? We got the sunshine and um, blue sky two days ago, like a snippet of it in the in the afternoon. And then by the next day, it felt like a normal day. And you guys, it is like a huge relief. We haven't seen the sun or um, blue sky in weeks. Like literally weeks, it looks like we're socked and cloudy, but worse because it's smoke and it's got this orange haze. It feels just very, ooh, you know, but, um, it kind of broke up and, and in, and in a way it's not a, like great cause it's kind of got high winds kind of inland and hopefully, you know, the fire blows back on top of itself, but, um, what a huge relief to have some like normal weather and it's nice and cool. Like we were in this heat wave when the, when we lost our power, that was like a heat wave. We didn't lose it. They like turned it off, right? To prevent fire. Right. And so, um, the, the heat wave, it was like 107 degrees and like the next day, 85, like it just dropped. And I was trying to ask my husband, like, so do you think that the weather we see, is that a direct result of the, do the clouds cool it down because it's blocking the sun or is that would that normally be like that it's not clouds it's smoke you know what i mean i don't know it's hard to explain but oh that's i know sydney right i went for a run yesterday because i was like in a good groove before all that happened and i even just exercising in the house was hard because and i didn't because of the air quality, like the smoke was just everywhere. And I, I my rowing machine's um, outside. But, um, <laughs> so um, I finally got to exercise and I saw a local gal named Dory post something about, she's, she's like, posts this picture of her little happy feet. She's like, do you know why my feet are happy? It's cause I get to exercise. And I was like, yes, exactly. I was so excited to hear what was going on in my book. <laughs> like I hadn't heard what was going on in my book for like three weeks. <laughs> I was like, dang it, what's going on in my book? All right, let's pin this. Oh, maybe I should. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna do this because I'm having such a bad sewing day. I'm going to um, set myself up for a little bit more success and put a stitch line around this edge here. Look at that unevenness there. Let's just hope I am. I'm just gonna stitch this and then I'm gonna iron along this um, stitch line as a guide. This is a nice little trick when you really want to make sure you're doing something kind of even <clears throat> or you have this fabric that's loosey-goosey. You know what I mean? So. Oh, Sarah. Oh, you had a sore throat from the smoke. I know. I woke up one morning and I couldn't even talk. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, Sydney. Yeah, it, it, that, is, that is so true. Like, it already feels so oppressive staying home and not feeling at least like you can just go to the store, right? And um, on top of that, yeah, we're all wearing masks here. It's like, honestly, it's the most mask wearing this community has done is because of smoke, not because of COVID. Remember when I used to brag how great our area was? <laughs> we're like the highest in the state right now as far as new cases all the time crazy. All right, now I'm going to iron it. Yeah, I feel, I really feel for the people that have underlying issues related to like re respiratory issues because I don't know how long they'll be able to stay in an area like this. <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> I'm sure he missed it. 
We miss normal sometimes, you know? I'm really hacking this thing together, aren't I? <laughs> oh, I thought I was going to have a nice little tutorial on this Charlie Captain finally. Oh well. I don't really want to make a fifth one. Yeah, we've been um, putting the N95 inside of our cloth masks. My husband has one that fits perfectly, so I'm just kind of trying to adapt mine to fit over it. The um, from those mask panel, this the gosh dang, I can't believe I almost said that. Um, the Ruby Star Society mask panel, some of those fit really good over the N95. Oh, that's cool, Sydney. Yeah. Yeah, those are fun, aren't they? I want to save some of those as just like fabrics, you know? I've made my daughter probably eight masks in the last week. You know, she got the new job, and so I made her some new masks. So hers was getting a little tired. And I wanted her to be able to like be able to wash her masks with her her um, clothes. Um, more often because she's just she just wants to be cautious and um, she she had me like update the design and everything and then it was a little too small because she didn't take into account talking to people all the time like we don't do that anymore really you know so um, I had to make her a few more I always do things like this. I always do like some landmarks, you know, like do your shoulders, do your centers, get it all nice and flat, and then work on the curves and the weird spots, you know? This one obviously is going to be a struggle for me no matter what because of what I've been putting it through, or rather what it's been putting me through. Oh, you know what I forgot to do is put on my live chat, not the top chat. That's so smart, Penny. <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> Maybe you need to start a podcast. I thought about that once. I was like, oh, I don't know. Could I really talk that much? And I was like, uh, yeah, you can. My nervous habit is to talk. I'm going to change my chat. So at the top of the chat window, it says chat, chat and live chat. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'm missing so many. I just saw Rebecca's thing pop up. So nice. My dog, Ren, loves her sun patches. Yeah, I know. I told that to Molly. I was like, Molly, look, her sun on the deck. She was like, what? Did I put that seam allowance the wrong way? Oh, I did. Oh, snap. Oh, that's so cute. They got to see your friend. I hope I didn't miss anyone's chat. Sorry if I did. I don't know why the um, there's two different chats, but I do miss some. Sorry about that. Oh, I was kind of hoping it would be easier to breathe under there, Nancy, because it keeps it away from the fa your face, you know, but... Shoot. That's my problem right now is I'll be out in public and I'll talk to someone and I get really out of breath really quickly. I'm so nervous to see a human being. <laughs> see if I can get this nice and flat.
sometimes I also do this. I'll just lay this flat and then I'll just pin right in the middle. Because I want to make sure that it's actually laying flat, you know? When it's weird things like v-necks and stuff like this. There's my seam. It looks a little off center, huh? It's gonna give that optical illusion for being off center. There we go. This is my seam right here. <laughs> That's awesome. Ray and Sarah are gonna have a little talkathon. <laughs> Barbara, really? That's so funny. I always think that um, I'm a pretty socialized person until I get in front of people, and I'm like, oh yeah, I feel like I'm lacking in some social skills. Alright, a few more pins and then we'll be back to sewing and to let me jinx myself. Easier parts of this dress. This honestly the bodice panel was easier than everything I've done today. <laughs> and I did two of them. <laughs> and I recorded it. <laughs> For all to judge. <laughs> Yeah, we need to, okay, let's talk about the Zoom thing. I was actually um, gonna talk to Rebecca because Rebecca's becoming a Zoom pro and see if I could trade her something in, in um, uh, for Zoom lessons. Because I think that we really should do like a, um, I'd like to do like a sewing circle meetup friend type of thing, you know, with you guys. All right. See, there's that flaw. You can see it almost better on this surface. Yee. I think live chat should be the default too. I don't know why. There's even two chats, you know? Yeah, I know we're, we, we were, we only had two or four in 95s before the fire and now we're, we're out. So. space <laughs> you just can't win with that word can you all right let me uh, when you're doing things like this it's a circle make sure you don't start sewing it like this eventually like see how my dress is folded back eventually you will have to pick up and um, get your dress out of the way like this if this is a circle, you can only sew in a continuous circle if you can see the whole circle, right? If you only have half the circle exposed, you're gonna at some point have to stop, pull out the dress, and then start back up again. Quick tip. I know this one, that one very well. There used to be something I sewed a lot that uh, I got really good at that. All right, here we go. Um, because of we don't need to like nail it. I can just sew this down. You know, it's not like I'm finishing a collar or a waistband. We can just stitch this down. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, my mine's. I have one literally sitting on the floor under a table over there because I plan to use it to make a pattern. I just keep forgetting to bend down and pick it up because it's in a really awkward spot. Oh, I have a little bump there. Shoot, I was gonna fix that while I sewed. Try and keep this nice and flat so my dress isn't pulling. Could be a subtle message. <laughs> you know, you gotta throw kids a bone here and there, you know? What they're gonna do is like, where's your anus? <laughs> or they'll be wanting it. Even on Big Bang Theory, they make jokes about that. Kind of cracks me up. I'm not getting enough Big Bang Theory lately since we moved. I actually own all of them. It's like the one of the rare things I own, and uh, I just need to put them on. But that takes Wi-Fi. All right, we are past this bloody neckline. <laughs> Looks good. No torquing. It's very nice. All right. Well, I prevailed. Oh, you did, Sydney. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Megan. Man, I Megan's really got me trained, at least though, right? All right. I'm gonna do the uh, pockets now. Let's just hope there's some notches. Is there notches? Is there notches? Let's put it on. This is going to be a good one. All right, for all that worry about the neckline, it doesn't feel like it'll be too low, which is good. I'm trying to see where my side seams are. Those are lined up. All right. Ray! <laughs> Ray, thank you. You're so amazing. <laughs> Rebecca, you have the chat. You're way behind in the chat. Are you saying sure to helping me out with Zoom? Cool. Nancy, if you haven't seen Big Bang Theory, I highly recommend it. It is so, it's so funny and there's so many like, they do so, the stereotypes of them so well and it makes you cringe a lot in the beginning and then you realize it's just like, they're gonna, they're gonna handle those stereotypes. They really do. Don't let them get away with it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Because at first I was just like, oh, Penny's character, man. How are we going to, like, this is not okay. But it it all, it works out. Anyway. Um, all right. So these are my, these are my, um, that's where I'm going to put my pockets. And I'm going to mark it on all of them right now. I just need a top notch, honestly. I'm going to do a little lower. I felt like I was kind of aiming high. And I didn't have it very accurate. So we're going to do that. Okay. And then I'm going to flip it over here. And do it on the side. Yeah, I should start Big Bang Theory again. I will just put it on anywhere. And I... When she took out the new neighbor. It's my daily. It, yeah, it was my daily too. 
Your cousin cannot handle it. <laughs> I know there's some people that are just like, especially scientists. I, like I know I hang out with a guy, um, like a, like a game with this guy he, and he's a phys, a physicist. He, he, oh my gosh, he uh, majored in physics and he's a physics teacher. And he's like, I just can't get into that show. <laughs> I'm just like, he's literally a character off that show, you guys. And, and it's why I like hanging out with him. He cracks me up. He's so he's so funny, but he doesn't know it. And um, so smart. It's pretty funny. All right, where'd that go? Where'd, the, where'd those go? Right here? Okay. I'm sure my left and right sides are different heights from each other, right? Yeah, so, yeah, keep going, Nancy. I mean, if you if you want, yeah. Oh, the guys to do everything for, oh, right. You know, that's a season I haven't seen as many times, and that's what I love. Every time I put on something, my husband's like, I haven't seen this one, and it just watching him watch it for the first time is such a delight for me. Because I know I've seen them all. I've even listened to them in the car, you know? <laughs> all right, so let's see here. Every time I do this, I'm worried I'm going to do it wrong. I don't know why. And today is the day to do them wrong for sure. Alright, here we go. Pockets are so great, but I really shouldn't have them. I put everything in there and it makes my dress look ridiculous. You know what I mean? I have a big phone, I have car keys, my wallet. It's bad. I really should use a purse, just don't. <laughs> Fortunately, it's more appropriate there. It's hopefully at least more appropriate than Howard. <laughs> I mean, Howard is every girl's nightmare. But she takes care of him. He marries a good, a good wife. Spoiler alert, sorry. Yeah, I can quote them all too. I remember when I first started watching those, it was so fun to see the cameos, you know, by um, uh, Sheldon's mom and uh, Leslie. Leslie, what's her name? Leslie. I thought those were good. They were a good nod to where Leonard came from. Has anyone watched Young Sheldon? Those are pretty good. I'm behind on those now that I don't have TV, but <laughs> I enjoy them. Yeah, right, Ray? I always thought, thought Seinfeld was so mean. And that's a very unpopular opinion. I don't like humor that makes fun of people. I think the thing is, I just didn't get it because I think you're supposed to not like the characters on Seinfeld and I didn't understand that. So it was kind of over my head. Once I realized that, I was like, okay. Now we have pockets. Wait, I just thought I put that wrong sides together. There we go. Should I iron that first? <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> yeah, my mom kept telling me, you'd really like this show. And I didn't have TV at the time. And I was like, okay. And then um, I finally, I think we had, we got it or something, or it was a trial, a cable trial or something. <laughs> you lived in that, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you don't need that. Oh, wait, why aren't these the same? Come on, I notched them at the same time. Did I put this one above the notch? Yeah, I did. God, what could go wrong? I'm telling you guys. 
Be consistent. Be e consistent. <laughs> oh, man. So I've been thinking about like what pattern I'm going to do next and I don't know, but I think I'm going to do a, a dog bed. You know how the bin bin, you can make whatever size you want. I'm going to do a dog bed. You can do whatever size you want and it's going to have the little bolster around the sides. I'm going to try it. I think like it would be a fun way to make a dog bed that we like the way it looks in our house or a cat bed. You know what I mean? And, um, we could use fabric. We could stuff it with scraps for the most part. I think it's not, scraps aren't aren't um, soft enough for the bottom part, but the sides would make a good bolster. And it'd make it heavier so that the bed stays in one spot for that dog that likes to move things. I have one of those. All right, let's raise this up. All right, get these. If you weren't watching, I would have totally um, just made my pocket a different size. <laughs> but I know they are kind of expensive, you know, and then it could be washable. Um, a good way to use your stash fabric and to have a few, you know. I like the idea also that like not just a flat bed, but the little side bolster, you know, cause I think like that's, that's, um, so nice to have for them, but we'll see. I know I should probably consider doing clothing. I just don't have dress forms for it and I'm just not sure there's a lot of good clothing companies out there already. So. Yeah, right? They love the rest there on the arms. I've seen those little couches. Those are cute. You need, um, oh, yeah. So you, just to like, cover the, oh, did I run out of, wait, is that really how far I got? Okay. Am I about to run out of bobbin? Am I turning the stream around by checking my bobbin first? I am about to run out of bobbin. Here we go. All right. Yeah, I think uh, that's something I should probably do is a little bonus on how to make a lid for a bin bin. Yes, I feel you, Nancy. I just want to make clothes. I don't need more clothes. This is why I look for like a sponsored stream. And I don't really look for sponsored streams like I should. I really should look for them more often. Right now I'm keeping myself busy, but um, yeah. Wait, how did I do this? Did I just do this wrong? Oh, I did do this wrong. Shoot, I knew it. I forgot to do a, a French seam for the, the pocket right there. For the pocket seam to the dress. And yes, I'm just going to carry on. But yeah, you could do your seam right here as a, a French seam. And then carry on with your pocket. Where are you? There you are. The dress is getting heavy. I made this dress shorter too because um, I love wearing my long one the most, but it's kind of hot and I, I can't even walk up the stairs. I step on it in every step. So if my hands are full, I it's just kind of tra tra uh, dangerous. So I thought I would try making a shorter one like my pleated one, but um, in rayon. Oh, 
Oh no, Nancy. Yeah, I know, Louise. There's one gal I follow that I, I wonder that so much. Like, I, it, and I, her feed's great. Like, she makes some amazing things. And I just think, wow, how? <laughs> I put all kinds of things in my pocket, Nancy. That's what I was saying. I'm going to trim this down. These scissors. I found my, I finally found my scissor sharpener. Um, and I'm, I took it home. I'm going to work on all my little scissors, especially a couple of favorite pairs. It's this one by Ginger. It's like the scissor sharpener. It's like a stone. There's no instructions though. And I think, um, I'm going to give it a shot again because I could get it to work sometimes, but I admittedly don't think I was doing it quite correctly, you know? Yeah, and this person in particular has a lot of kids. So I'm always like, wow, I couldn't even take a picture with my kid that age, you know? There's no way. And I think she has a puppy or something. But her makes are beautiful. All right. I think that is like the thing you have to do. You just have to figure out what you want to put out there and it's okay. Anything is okay, you know? I've definitely been stress sewing lately and um, sewing a lot of stuff and just kind of finishing things up and making videos. So I'm sewing a lot of things for those. And um, you know, what happens? <laughs> That's what I'm wondering, Ray. I think like that's what made me think like, you know what, maybe now I'm going to find the proper information for that thing. So that's what I'm kind of hoping for. I should have, yeah, I should have ironed these. If I had ironed those, I pr might even have remembered that they needed to be French seams. That would have been taking out four scenes and I'm on the mood right now. Yeah, Louise. I, you know, you can also mute people. And then maybe once look in your, because I, I had to do that with one person. I was like, all right, there's no sewing content anymore. It is just your gorgeous smile all the time. <laughs> and I, you know what? That's awesome. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I think it's awesome. Whatever you want to do on there, you do on there, you know? But for me, I follow, I really want to catch up with a lot of people. And there's a lot of people who don't post very often. So I miss what they post. Unless I think about looking at their feed, you know? And I've done that before. Like, I'll go look. Or I'll see someone like on my posts. I'm like, oh, what are they up to? And then I go look, you know? And then I'm liking like four of their things, but I missed it. So it's really that. Like I don't like it cluttering because once Instagram became non um, uh, chronological, it ruined that kind of experience. And I don't really know who that benefited. So it's kind of a it's kind of a shame. So. Yeah, you will, Nancy. It's your hope chest. You can totally surge, Derek. Yeah, totally surge. You do not need to do French seams hardly ever unless something's sheer. Yeah. Yeah, and I, you know, I'll, I'll be really honest, Derek. There's a lot of times I don't surge or do French seams. I leave my seams raw. Um, and I top stitch them down. I like the look of that. I've done it especially on bias cut garments, but I like the look of it on the outside because what I'll do is I'll open the seam and top stitch on either side. And I love how flat it makes the seams and I like how lightweight it makes the seams. But that is a very unpopular uh, method. Like it's not, 
anything anyone would ever encourage you to do, you know? But surgeries haven't always existed, so... Instagram hasn't been chronological for years, Nancy. They changed it a few years ago, and so now you see the posts that you interact with the most. So if you think you're seeing one person a lot, it's probably because you're like, oh, I, um, I'm i going to like that so that I don't see it again, right? Because sometimes you see, you'll see things more than once, and it's because you haven't liked it yet. And then what happens is because you're liking that, that person's posts to get them kind of just, you know, aside so you can see other things. Instagram thinks you like seeing that person's posts a lot because you're liking them all the time and then you keep seeing them. It's like this wicked circle. Bye, Malin. Flying taxi, aw. Yes, enjoy your evening drive. Drive safe. Her scarf's really coming along. Merlin's like temperature scarf she started this year. I saw a picture of it the other day. Oh God, this is like, I wish I had better scissors right now. I would just normally do this as a um, rotary knife. I'm just trimming down my seam allowances right now. There's nothing like, you know, sitting down, usually when I'm using the restroom, I will admit, and then you're sitting there like examining your clothing that you've made and you notice your French seams have threads poking out of them. This is my constant thing. I cut this so close to the seam right now, I have to sew this again. <laughs> Was that TMI for you guys? <laughs> oh, wow. Have you seen if they have, Penny, have you seen if they have a uh, errata on their website? And then maybe all those things are addressed so you don't have to, to do that. That's a bummer, though. You know, um, I feel that way about something I, I sewed. I really like this company and I really want to support them. But um, the pattern, a lot of the seams weren't true, trued up, or 90 degrees. There's a couple of ways they could have drafted it to hang better. And it's like, I don't know how far I want to go with it, you know? Okay, I'm going to iron these. <laughs> I that's exactly it Nancy that's me you know what is this coming from the hem okay <laughs> all right so I like to when I do do two at a time like this I will off kilter them That way I can sew, or I mean iron, and I don't affect the other seam. Today I'm cleaning my studio. I'm declaring it for all to hear. It's gone on long enough. Okay, when you're doing French seams on the, the uh, pockets, you, at the um, juncture at the bottom, right here, you're gonna need to cut up into that pivot. Otherwise, there's no way you can turn it to do your next seam. I kinda cut down this, some of this bulk here. I don't think I need to do it at the top, per se. It's just at that at this pivot. See the pocket go around and then down the side seam and you go up into that. Oh, the iron heats up. I'll do that. <laughs> oh, it's their newest pattern, whoever it is. Oh. It, are you testing? You know, um, I think sometimes testers are very polite and they don't want to call you out on something. Um, I'm really glad. I've had a few testers that are just like, this is 
you know, this could be better. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. That could be better. And it's good. I like that. Yeah, you know, and that's the thing is like, you're only one for finding the mistakes. Well, and I think sometimes um, test sewists are almost too uh, good at sewing. There needs to be people that are that think differently. Like you need different kinds of brains, you know. Like the people who are like, oh, I can just figure. It. They just figure it out without knowing it. Though they're great to have too because they're just going to get through it and finish it. But they may not understand that they're doing they're fixing something without knowing it and then there's other folks that analyze it step by step and take it as it shows them and they're like wait does that mean this or that it's good to have all those different kinds of the people who learn differently and think differently Yeah, so you clipping this so you can get into this little spot right here because we're going to sew around that. You have to clip it. It feels wrong, but you have to. Yeah, true, Sydney. Oh, yeah, I think I remember that, Louise. I think uh, Brooke sent me a link to that because it was a blog post, right? And they were, she was just like, look, I really like this company, but this pattern is unsewable and they fixed it, right? And I was like, dang, I would like to do that, but Every pattern company I sew, they ignore me. Not every one of them, but <laughs> they ignore me. <laughs> I waffle. Like, there's this one that I want, the, the pattern I'm talking about right now. I would really like to contact them and say, hey, you know, this we did this this is what would happen to your pattern you know but i like i said i don't like being a know-it-all i just want to be helpful look if there's ink oh i was testing my pin on there i'm like why is there ink on there oh it was a stories post oh interesting yeah yeah this was a blog that i didn't hadn't heard of i don't even remember who it was um i think the pattern company might have been might have been deer and doe. I don't remember though. It was a it was a jacket that I hadn't made. Something about the hem. But yeah, it definitely wrote like the ire of the sewing public was raised. <laughs> People were like, I have sewn that and it is a nightmare. And I'm like, oh. But they fixed it, and I think that's that's really great. Let's see, I had I should have I should have ironed this. Cause look at it, it's puffy. Oh, I'm so lazy. I'm so lazy. Also, where did all the steam go in here? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think they're intimidated by me at all. I just think they're like, eh. to see here all right I am too enthusiastic is what I think <laughs> yeah they do I mean I think there's a lot of uh, companies that do very minimal instructions and I think that that is a way for them to um, uh, how do I explain that? Like, it's better to be less than to be wrong with your instructions. But that's the thing is like that doesn't that doesn't actually end up working that way. Um, I don't know about Deer and Doe. I'm not saying that about them. Um, I I don't know if I followed their instructions. What did I? I made the sa. What was that? The saffron jeans. And see, I, I know how to make jeans, so I didn't really need those, so I didn't look at them. And then um, I made the Azara skirt, which I lined, so I didn't even follow them. And then what was the jacket I made? 
Yeah. Yeah, you need to say something, Sarah. Exactly. And that's the thing is like, you know, my problem with that is that what they'll say, because I had to point this out for a company once. I was like, I don't understand what's going on here. And what it was, was their, their size chart on the pattern was incorrect. And I couldn't believe that I'd noticed that, like, cause I, not that I noticed it, that it would be like that. So I was like, why is it like this? Like what? Cause I didn't, couldn't, I wouldn't think it was wrong. It was a big indie company. They've made other patterns. They would just copy and paste that, right? And so I t kept doubting myself. So I finally asked them and they were like, oh, well, we've reprinted that pattern. So it's not like that anymore, right? So the thing is, Sarah, if you contact them, they may say, oh, we issued errata on that pattern and it's on our website. You can find it here. So there's really no, like this is one good thing about PDF patterns is a pattern company can update the pattern. They can notify users and then they can be like, phew, okay, everybody knows. Whether people download the new pattern or not or remember, oh, I got that, I got an update, you know, because, you know, we're busy people. We may not go, okay, I'm going to update this right away. And I will say like with my PDF um, program, it doesn't let me tell people why I updated it. So I'd literally have to change the title to something like bin bin version two, pages three, eight, nine, and 10. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, what was the coat? The full swingy coat, exactly. Yeah, what was that called? And I had trouble with that back facing on that one, but I just couldn't tell if that was me or the fabric. But the facing was hecka small. Remember that? I had to like re-drape it. Cause I was like, I had like the next day I was gonna finish it with you guys. And I was like, why isn't it laying flat? I had to redraft the back neck facing. But what was that coat called? That coat was beautiful. It had the snail print lining. We did it for hearts. Um, Aram? I can't remember the name of that thing. Oh well. All right, so I usually go, I line up these, the pocket seam here, I put them one on top of the other. The other one's not ironed very well. Um, I actually go down straight a little bit like that, and then I'm going to sew it together. I like kind of just doing a straight line into the pocket opening a tiny bit to kind of make it so that it um, turns to the inside there, and I'll show you when I'm done. Would have been so nice if I'd done French seams <laughs> there, though. <laughs> yeah, I know, Sarah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, most home sewers cannot redraft patterns. And, you know, I have literally wondered, could I get away with a... YouTube channel series of um, I love this pattern but this is how you fix it to be better drafted without like that coming off that I'm hating on their pattern because there's some really good patterns out there like design wise but they need some a little bit of help you know so hi Anishka how's it going oh you know what? I think that's it. I think you're right. That was the blog post. Not the one I made, but yeah, it's the Sapporo by Paper Cut. Yeah, that's what it is. It wasn't Dear and Joe. I just remember I had sewn something by Paper Cut really close to when that, that blog post came out. 
I think that's why I thought it was uh, Deer and Doe because um, uh, I, I don't know why I get Deer and Doe and Paper Cut confused, and they're completely different companies. I don't know why that is, but I think you're right. Yeah, good job. And they fixed it, like I keep saying, but still. And she um, did a pretty good job, the blog poster, of explaining why it didn't work. And I, I like the, the links she went to to triple check it. I was like, nice job. Because that's the thing is like, if you're someone, you know, like a blogger or someone, you don't really want to put down a company. And so I think she really came at it like, am I crazy or what? <laughs> so she really fixed it. Oh, inside the hem. Oh yeah, thank you, Dark. It's amazing how obvious it is, isn't it? It's just the way it faces. I didn't, Louise. I, I, I just got it confused with the deer and doe pattern because I think um, I confused those two companies. But it was the it was, uh, and I had just sewn that paper cut. Um, what was that blouse that had the the weird like knot looking thing right here? It was really cool. It was like a pullover knit. Um, I made a couple of them. I made one with you guys. It was in my needle shark box. Oh, I need to go a little further because I need to line up with the sizing. Yeah, I recorded a bunch of videos the other day and my mic was facing my pattern table for all of them. <laughs> I had to re-record all of them. I used to put the mic on the, the computer stand, but opium, that's it. Oh, that's a bummer, Penny. Hopefully, um, they got that pattern update, but you know, you know, it's not like we don't need to sew more than one of the same coat usually. So, all right. So we've got our, so I, I like go, so here's my seam for my sleeve, my, uh, pocket to the dress. I go up and I go past it and then I go down for the, to kind of, kind of continue the side seam. And so even though there's this space right here, it works out fine on the outside. All it does is put the seam, let's get rid of some of these threads so it looks like I know what I'm doing. Kind of hard to tell today. Um, it puts that seam, so this is the one we were just looking at. I don't know if you can see. There's that seam, and here's my side seam. And so as long as your seam up here and here pretty much line up, it just makes the seam that your pocket sewn to the dress is tucked in there and invisible. So that's all that does. It doesn't really change the placement of your pocket. It kind of just ensures that it's all hidden in there. Like that. <laughs> right, right? I've definitely had days where I've rage quit. I'm like, oof, I'm going home. All right, so now um, I my uh, side seams and pockets need a good press, and I just need to hem. Well, let's hem this baby. Okay, so which one's my back? This is my back, right? Nope, that's my front. So let's see, one of my shoulder seams was pressed the wrong way. It's not this one. So that one's pressed towards the back. All right, so I'm gonna do this one. See, the cool thing about this sleeve, even though it's not a set in sleeve, is it's actually straight. So you don't have to deal with a curve. It looks like you're gonna have to deal with a curve right here at the underarm, but you don't. It's kind of nice. You know? I'm just gonna do a rolled hem. It's a level pocket method. That's a method? Oh, interesting. Oh, cool, Allison. Well, I forgot to. I forgot to um, uh, sew them on with the French seam. This is a shorter version, Louise. 
I have a long one and um, I wanted a rayon one that's short so I don't get hung up on my stairs. Plus it's a little cooler. Let me straighten this edge out here. Oh geez. That wasn't a very straight. Oh my God. Wow. Okay. Well, this is a so, so wing it. <laughs> this is what happens when I don't stream for a week and I only stream once a week. I lose my touch. <laughs> oh, that's a lovely pocket. <laughs> you could have had me thinking that was a total method, Louise. I would have believed you. You know, like sometimes you logically come up with a way to sew something and then you learn that there's this whole like world based on it and you're like, oh, okay, I'm not that smart, you know? Like when I started seeing the burrito method for sewing a yoke, I was like, what are they talking about? When I finally saw it, I was like, well, wait, isn't that kind of what I do? But um, I just don't, I do it off the shoulders. Where's the scissors? The scissors I like. <laughs> Where are my scissors? Where did I just finish that? Here they are. Those little green scissors are so lightweight. And I'll bet they can fall over there. They can fall and they'll be silent. Because the um the handle look is totally bendable. It's a level pocket. <laughs> All right. Let's see, let's do the other sleeve him. Should we put it on the dress form today? I need to give some serious love to my dress form. So I might do a, a few draping streams next month because I'm missing using her. And um, we haven't in a while. So I think I might do that. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well... Uh, I guess we're learning other skills here. <laughs> Welcome, Grammy. How's it going? <laughs> That's really, really funny. <laughs> I, um, it's, it's kind of, I've definitely Googled things and really regretted it, you know? So... I'm glad it wasn't a full-on regret, you know, but got to watch it sometimes. All right. So I've heard from, a, a, like, three of you about the, um... Your feelings on the jelly roll quilt method. And I think that there's more than three of you that feel this way that are just like, all right, like letting go of the control of the color placement is a little harder than I thought it would be. And um, I am with you on that. Like I can kind of let go of, here's my flaw. I'm going to take care of that right now. Um, I can kind of let go of control over things but um that one it's not even like it's, it's not even in a random pleasing way sometimes you know maybe if i had done like rainbow but watch it end up just looking not even like a rainbow when you're done you know so I have this major flaw if you're just joining me in this fabric so I'm just going to sew with a dart straight down to the hem. And we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Fancy hands. Yes. Okay. Let's see. All right. Um, I think I'm going to probably press the dress right now because I want to look at this dart I just created and see 
see if it'll it'll be okay. I don't think that um, it's going to be perfect at all. It's in a really, really bad spot. I won't turn the microphone this time. Yeah, like, I, I don't mind giving up control on certain things, but, like, I did this little jelly roll I had sitting around, and I was like, you know, I'm going to do this method on it. Um, and I, I think I put, did I put that in my, yeah, I did it, I put it in an Instagram post, but, um, because Loki immediately crawled on it. There's, like, a part of, like, a, some fabric flow happening right there in my pocket. I don't know if you can see that. You see this little line? It's like a thread got pulled. The flaw was in the front of the fabric, front of the dress. I didn't see it till after it was cut, if you can believe it. But see, it's all, it's like, um, it didn't get woven right there. It's really weird. And I had already, I just, I just make sure you can't see it when I do the how-to video. <laughs> I didn't want it to be a distracting feature. Now that you know it's there, you'll probably look for it. I know you guys. I tried to make it so that it was the um, back that got sewn in the video. It might be in, even. And I just don't mention the fact that it's the back of my dress since I did a double bodice panel. So I think I'm just gonna press this like this and see, did I get that right there? Yeah, I did. How we like it. It's right there. Can't even see it. I was gonna I was like gonna allow myself to top stitch it down, but I just don't think I have to. There it is. It'll be fine. It almost matches the print, so that's the second dress I have with <laughs> a big old fat thing in the front. The other one was my own dang fault. I gotta provide some uh, live drama occasionally, right? That's when I surged through the front of my dress <laughs> on the Maya Sotis dress. <laughs> Oof. That was pretty exciting. Yeah, I think it will be pretty invisible. Which one, Sydney? The one that's got the seam down the center? Yeah, I didn't know there was a flaw. Um, in fact, I had bought that fabric, washed that fabric, and it sat on my shelf for a while before I cut it the other day. And then when I got to the machine, I noticed it. Like, I, I, it got pretty far in my world. It's looking pretty good. I love wearing dresses. They're so dang comfortable. I even wear them on my days off because that's what I like to wear. This is the front. Are you still here, Derek? I'm curious what you're making that called for French scenes. Is this fabric not cheap? See, I got it at on one of Needle Sharp's sales, so it seemed affordable. Because I think she does it like um, below retail once she's done her boxes and she just wants to make space. Okay, I want to look at my pockets here, make sure. They look good on this side. Like that. Put a nice 
nice wrinkle on my dress right there. And let's do this last pocket here. Um, now I just need to look for the dart to know the front. <laughs> Hi, Helen, how's it going? Oh, totally, Louise. Yeah, I don't think she knew that. It, it was so hidden to me. Like, I, I just couldn't see it. In fact, when I found it, I saw the threads hanging off of it. The, those ones, those threads you just saw me cut off first before I sewed it. I saw those and I was like, that's weird. What are those threads? And I still couldn't see that flaw. I think, you know, your mind wants to see something correct. You know, like you don't. You, you're you're not expecting to see it so you don't see it and um that was certainly the case for me but it's all fixed now this is the back so i have a double bodice panel and this is the front See, I, I stitched the lining in the seam allowance so that doesn't even matter on the outside. All right, let's just hem it. And we're done. I survived my fourth Charlie Kafton. Barely. Remember that time I lined one? <laughs> that fabric was kind of a nightmare. The lining was so thready. Gosh, I, I like that little dress. I always get a lot of compliments on that one, but um, that one looks a little maternity on me because of the lining. It kind of poofs and I don't like that. And um, it's also kind of hot to wear. That's why I knew it would be warm because it was polyester, but the fabric is great. Like that's one of those um, spoon flower fabrics and they did a, uh, what is it a chiffon? Uh, what is that base? It's like a chiffon. Wait, is it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's polyester, but the print quality, so good. Like it's, and it's and it's so drapey, um, and it's kind of sheer. You could make some really nice curtains with it. Expensive, but it would be nice, you know. And I bought it. I bought that piece of fabric. Because when I was a pro member, they would allow you to have a really good discount anytime they came out with a new fabric. And that's when I bought that one. Okay, this is my front. I've been um, buying a lot of fabrics in the clearance section lately. Because the gals at the store are like, have you looked in the clearance section? And I'm like, you know, you're right. I should just go look. Like, I'm not even going to keep this item. It's going to be for a video, right? And I've found some really fun stuff. I found the backing to my quilt. It's it's not really what I would pick, but it's kind of growing on me. And no one's going to see it. It's going to be on the inside of my duvet cover, right? It's just backing the quilt top. And it was $3.99 a yard or $3 a yard. So. <laughs> Shower PJs and so, so like that is, that is some high entertainment there. <laughs> Are you watching in bed too? <laughs> a lot of the streamers I watch are um, usually in Europe when I'm watching them. And so it is kind of funny. I'll be like, good morning. And they're like, good morning. What are you talking about? Because it's their evening. I pressed that seam. It looks like the wrong way. I'll have to press that again. That's a sharp jacket. I've been trying to come up with ideas for videos to make that would be a tutorial for purchase. And I've been trying to come up with ones that would be helpful. In bed on the iPad, yeah, nice. 
Any pets with you? My pets totally watch streams with me. Um, but I was thinking the uh, Blanca flight suit would be one. And then, because that's kind of relatively new. But then maybe something as tried and true as like the Wixton Howry or... But see, I have all these streams. So maybe I shouldn't do those. Almost done. Everyone here gets a t-shirt and it's, um, I went to the SoSo -So live stream watching her sew her fourth Carly Captain and all I got was sore eyes. <laughs> doo -doo -doo. All right. Should we put it on the dress form? I'm excited. This dress is so easy to wear. It's so comfortable, you know? This print is so great. Maybe putting it... Uh, I couldn't have matched the print because the bottom part of it is on the fold. The top part's not, so... Neck binding. Um, you know, I have done that, Penny. What video did I do that? You know, neck binding is really hard. I actually... I, I wouldn't say I disagree with using neck binding, but I have strong opinions on using neck binding because the thing with sewing it is the, the binding itself is stretchy. And when you pull on it, if you're sewing it, it kind of gets pulled a little bit. And what happens is that draws it in, right? And so when you're trying to sew the binding and it goes to one side, so if you're pressing the binding all the way to the inside of the garment, that's the hardest kind. If it's straddling the edge, like wrapping around the edge on the front, on the inside and the outside, it's easy. It's fine because the edge, this just stays exactly how it is, you know, this neckline right here. But if you're sewing binding to the neckline, that's going to get pressed to the inside. What happens is the binding is the same um, length on either long cut edge of the binding and it gets sewn to this edge, trimmed, and then now you've made it so that the other long edge is shorter than where it's gonna get sewn to. Because if you were to measure this edge and measure the edge that it gets sewn to, you know, whatever, a half inch away, that's a lot longer. That's why it doesn't work so well. But I, I'll, I'll consider helping, helping doing a video, so. Oh, you have a new electric bike, nice. Yeah, I totally agree with that, Ray. Thanks, Rebecca. I know. I'm li I like this. I like the dark color. I like the blue. My folds are all need to be pressed. Um, let's see what my camera looks like over there. That's not too bad. It's not uh, disconnected. We could put it on my dress form. Whoops. Get um here. I'll put it on the dress form real quick. It's so wide. Oh, I need the mouse. my my zipper bundle that's what that is I know it looks probably looks really weird maybe I could do the full screen no nope, that's not it <laughs> Time table. what's the full screen one yeah I can barely reach the camera, so why is this so? This is why I don't do this. So, I think I can reach that. Let's 
stuck with this higgledy piggledy. Yeah, perfect for autumn. So I was thinking. It was just all the inside. Yeah. Yeah, you know, one time I sewed the, um, one of the, I think it was the tunic number one by 100 Acts of Sewing. And I just couldn't do it. Like, I literally couldn't do it. So I ended up um, having a little bit of the binding show. Oh, I, I love the way the back looks. Look at that. Can you see that? Does it look, I looked, I looks maternity though. <laughs> better be better on. <laughs> because you see how the, I don't know, can you see like this right here? Because there's no set-in armhole right here. This is off kilter too. Because there's no set-in armhole, there's this big fold right here and right here. And so it sags, right? You don't have any structure here to hold up the dress. So it's behind the chat for you. Is it? What do you mean? behind the chat for you. Yeah, right? The facing. I totally agree with you. Um, I'm going to zoom this in a little bit. What I have learned about this Friday dress is not to scrunch it all the way. The chat is on the right side of the screen. Over the, how is it obscuring it? This way though. I do like the way the back looks. And Beatrice is on the right. Oh, I see. So you are probably watching it in theater mode. So exit out a little bit. I can swap though. Is that better? <laughs> anyway, yeah. My hips are so tilted forward. This is why I get this. But I love the way the back looks. Wow. I may end up putting this bodice panel on the back of all my dresses now. I love the way the back looks. Like, I have always wanted to be flat chested. So I've always wanted to look like this anyway on the front. <laughs> I love it. And then I've got pockets. The lighting is so bad here. You can see, now you can kind of see that sag there. See that? It would look better if it had the constructed armhole. You see that? See the difference? I am the champion of set end sleeves and armholes. <laughs> Meaning I'm the champion, I championed them. <laughs> well, cool. I'll try that on after the stream. And there's my my uh, seam for the fabric flaw right there. Uh, this is it right here. Can't even see it. No one will know. That's what I always. That's what I thought, Nicole. Because for me, like you can even see it in this dress. 
how it's just like it, for me I feel like my posture is straight up and down and it is right but my hips are very forward and so anytime I can cinch right there and even add some fullness to go over my hips and butt you definitely see the seam I feel like it's pretty good though this is just part of the caftan style you could yeah I mean you can make a set in sleeve but you know the fit fitting um, a garment with a set in sleeve it adds a whole big layer of fitting so this is a lot easier to put out in the world you know as far as like fitting goes it's a it's more forgiving and it, and it feels good on you know I mean I think the thing with wearing um, a slit like I call this a slit armhole is you feel it a little cumbersome when you do this and I definitely will rip dresses right there occasionally oh you can't see the same Sydney okay I think kind of figured that's what it was yeah you can't yeah I can see it because I look for it and I know where it's at but yeah these gathers are all wrinkled too so maybe when I get them kind of relaxed maybe that one will end up inside like a, behind a fold But you see what I mean? <laughs> Bye, Rebecca. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> That's such a cute SMH. It's got like tousled hair. <laughs> All right. Well, um, well, that was an adventure. Um, I promise I know better what I'm doing on the bodice panel. So if you were here for sewing this, the bodice panel video is is it's better. I promise. So. Um, and I have sewn this a few times, but you can look at those past videos. They are going to be linked in the description as well to my website where I have just links to all the videos in one spot. It's not a, it's not a ploy to get you to my website. It's just a way to put all of the same garments videos in one spot when I've made it more than once or part one, part two, part three, whatever. So, um, all right, I don't think I decided what we were sewing next week, so it'll be a surprise. Um, but I'll be here Saturday. Yeah, I'll be here Saturday. I'm going to do some draping next month, too. And um, keep telling me what you guys are up to. Um, next week, I'm coming out with a video, my first video for sale on how to sew the bin bin. So it'll, it'll have um, all four dedicated videos to each one and a couple of bonuses on putting handles on it so you have a collapsible bag with handles and I'm gonna think about the lid idea I'm gonna think about the lid idea I should definitely do something like that so yeah exactly right it's in it's October I know I know maybe I'll go to two times a week I'm getting so much done though <laughs> sorry <laughs> all right well thanks for coming you guys uh, it's nice to see you and sorry I wasn't here with my duvet, like I promised, but I feel like clothing is always our wheelhouse, right? So, appreciate it very much. And, um, yeah, if you want to learn more about me, soso.live is my website. And follow me on Instagram, I guess. I don't know. What else should I say? <laughs> I'll see you guys soon. All right, now i got to find where my little thumbnail is. Okay, there it is. Okay, bye!